Bonjour tout le monde, welcome to Weekday Wanderings here in Paris. I'm Jackie, here we are in the 5th arrondissement. We are at the oldest place in Paris. So this place, uh, we're on the corner of, let's have a look at the moment. This is Rue de Navarre, a sign in the back, and Rue des Arènes. Okay. Location wise, oh, just so that you see, we've got an awesome little car behind us. You're gonna see it as it disappears. Little tourist guy doing his thing, so that's pretty cool. So, as I said, we're in the Fitter Rendez we're on the corner of the Rue des Arènes and uh, Rue de Navarre. Uh, it's just down in that general direction is the Jardin des Plantes, and just down over in this direction here is uh, Rue Manche. Okay. So, uh, Judy's online. She says, bonjour. Bonjour, Judy. Okay, I'm here with my two small children again. Okay, and they're going to go crazy and run around this very child-friendly uh, location here in Paris. So, as I said, we are at the oldest place in Paris, and it is called the Arène de Lutès. Okay, it's very special. Um... What is so cool about it was, it was, like I said, the oldest, it was built 2,000 years ago. Can you imagine that? So it was built in the first century, um, and it was in uh, use right up until the third century, when um, I believe the barbarians took over and the uh, Romans were ousted. I'm not too up on this kind of history but that's basically um, what I understand. Bonjour Susan McGregor, welcome! And so um, what happened was a lot of these Roman amphitheatres, Gallo-Roman amphitheatres, were um, they stopped being used around about the end of the third century and this one was the same. It was used uh, on and off right up by the, um, the other people who were here right up until the fifth century and um, then it kind of got buried and forgotten about and it was totally forgotten about. It became a cemetery at one point and then got filled up with dirt and everything and then it wasn't until in the mid or oh, 1860 that they decided that they wanted to build a tram station here at near Place Manche and um, then they uncovered the northern part of it so that would have been that part over there okay so then they discovered it uh, and they dug up a bit more and then uh, sort of by 1880 something um, they discovered this part of it and realized, oh my goodness, this is a piece of history. And of course, um, you can see here that it um, was incorporated into the new buildings that they were doing along Rue Mange. So, well, this is, these are buildings along Rue Mange here. And um, so part of it has been lost, obviously. But there was a group of uh, individuals, namely uh, Victor Hugo, he was one of the biggest proponents, to say, look, we need to keep this place. So they did. And in 1884, it was named a, um, a, an historic monument. Okay. So, the Arène de Lutèce. So why was it called the Arène de Lutèce? Well, Lutes was, uh, well, Lutetia was the name of um, Paris back under the, the Romans. And of course this was built under the Romans, so this is why it was called such. So it was used um, as a, uh, a gladiator um, arena. So this is where they would have kept animals, you know, like big cats. And now it, they keep other supplies. Okay, so up along here would have been the uh, the stage. So the second function was it was actually a theatre in the um, in the in the um, more modern sense. Although saying that, you know, the Romans and the Greeks were all oh, love their theatre, comedies and dramas. So this here was the theatre, the uh, sorry, the um, the stage. 
we'll get a better view if we go up which we will do shortly okay so yeah it's a pretty cool place um i just love the fact that it was just sitting here in plain sight well it was buried i suppose but for nearly a thousand years or about a thousand years it was just buried and they talked about this area this area has been called Les Arines for a really long time and I think they they fully knew that there were it was an arena here at one point but they kind of forgot about it and didn't know where it really was because it was all covered over and so um yeah and then um one day they like I said they were building a tram station and they dug it up now how do we get to the Arena de Lutes? Well as I said, um, we're right in the middle of where three metro stations are. So the entrance we came through, which was over that way, um, that goes towards the Jardin des Plantes. Okay, there's an exit which we will go out later, which is in that general direction, that heads towards the um, Metro Jussieu, which is line 10, line 7. Um, let's have a little peek out here. Okay. So at its height, um, obviously these um, these seating platforms here, um, these have been restored largely. The bases of them are, are original, but um, these were restored. Um, it would have gone up three tiers and it seated up to 17,000 people. Uh, just a quick hello to who is online. We have Judy online, we have Susan McGregor online. I saw Terry, so Terry is my friend who I was supposed to meet today, but Terry's feeling unwell. So Terry, I hope you're feeling better soon. And we look forward to seeing you when you're feeling better. Okay, so this is one of the entrance ways. This is Rue Manche. And if we come out, this is a really nice neighbourhood. It's beautiful, it's got lots of amenities, it's lovely, it's not so touristic. Um, but look, this is quite understated. You could just be walking along here. Look, there's the Hotel des Arènes here. Okay, and you can be walking along and next thing you see this little doorway, which doesn't really look like much. But it is in fact the entrance to the Arènes. Yes, Judy says, wow, 17,000 people. Yes it is, that's a huge number. Okay, so as in all um, uh, Parisian landmarks, um, we have a bit of Histoire de Paris, which tells you a little bit about it. I'll take a, I've taken a photo, so I will post that. For all of you people who can read French and want to do a little practice. Um, and, of course, this is now owned by the Ville de Paris, so it is a park. It's maintained. Um, it's free to enter. Um, and outside of full lockdown it is uh, freely available. I just have to make sure that my children are following me. Come on girls, let's go. Okay. So, um, this is the, the now I've, I've been researching a little bit about Gallo-Roman um, uh, arenas in France and this one is apparently the third biggest um, this this round area here, which is called the Cavier, I believe, is um, 53 meters by 47 meters elliptic. Um, the whole uh, structure originally was 150 meters by 100 meters, so it's quite big. So I heard that it was the third biggest. Not really sure about that, but yes. So we're going this way apparently. So this it really feels like an arena, like a modern day arena. So um, they obviously got it very right back in the day. And we continue to use the same sorts of structures in modern times. So I think these look fantastic, don't they? So that goes up to more seating over that way. But we're going to head up this way. So like I said, a lot of this is, um, has been restored. This was done, it, it was actually completed um, at the end of World War One. So I think in 1917 it was um, permanently reopened. Uh, and this is wood, this, I don't know what this is. Okay. Yeah, so those are kind of cool. Is it a stone? We don't know if it's wood or stone or something. Like or that. wood that turned into stone. Wood or that turned into stone, yes. Yeah, because they can be super, super, super old that turned into stone. So, 
they do um, lots of little events here. Back in the day when we didn't have COVID, they probably did a lot more than they do now. It is very old. It is the oldest place in Paris. So this gives us a better view. Look, they're growing grapes here, which is quite nice. They've got one over here and one over the far side there. Um, so it's a really popular place for people to come and have their lunch. I can remember um, after lockdown when all the restaurants were shut. Um, we would come. We would come here for our lunch because it was a nice place with lots of seating. Yeah, right, I need to get down the stairs without falling. Those over there. So here are our stairs. Love the view from the height, Merci, You're welcome. So, so here is the stage. Okay, so the stage measured um, was about 41 meters. Okay, so this is like one of the largest stages of a Roman amphitheater. Gallo Roman amphitheater. Okay, so these, these places here are really interesting. Do you know what these would have been for? If you can imagine, there would have been walls up here. So this has all been cut down to level. So you would have been facing the crowd this way. So you have a lot of these little arcade thingies and what they were was um, a little, I don't know the architectural terms for these porticos, um, for um, amplifying voices. So you can imagine the actors would have been standing in here and it would have echoed outwards for everyone to hear. So yeah. That's the Arrain de Lutece. So a lot of people come here, uh, like I said, for their lunches or kids playing down here. Uh, Patonk is very popular, usually mid-afternoon. And there's a playground. And there's a playground. And I see we've got oh, grapes cool. growing various places. A little bit of greenery. Porticos didn't know that. What the terminology the or the use of it? There's a toilet here and a water fountain. As you know, I like uh, giving you information about toilets. Okay. Right. So I forgot to mention I was talking about uh, access way. So the way we entered in was basically around here, um, where the Jardin des Plantes is. Um, there's a gate which we're about to show you out this way, which heads towards the Jussieu, which is line 7, line 10. Uh, if we went out the, uh, the Place Mange way, we could also get to Metro Place Mange, which is line 7. And if you go to the right up on the... Uh, uh, Rue Mange, you get to Cardinal Le Moine, which is on line 10. Okay, so this is very new, this part. This was built um, much later, so in the early uh, 1900s, and it's very pretty. So this is called the Square Capitaine, and uh, Monsieur Capitaine was the, the man who um, basically uh, finished off the Arène de Lutèce. So when it was... Um, being finished up at the end of World War One, so Monsieur Capitaine had this lovely little square named after him. So yes, so we go from the very very old to the more recent, but still a very beautiful um, hidey hole here in Paris. Okay, so we've got a lovely set of steps up here and a bit more garden. Okay, and that all joins up with the other seating area that we saw before. Nice little bit of um, permaculture going on here. And a beautiful, those beautiful stairs we just came down. And a little fountain, which I totally miss. So, here we have it. That's the Arrain de Lutèce, 
and uh, now we're going to head into the playground because as soon as a child sees a playground they want to go so thank you for joining me that's just another little fun corner of Paris with some awesome little bits of um, historical interest for you um, I will come back again on Tuesday again haven't thought of where I'm going but we will get on to that as soon as possible if you have any ideas of places you would like to go please uh, either uh, mess uh, message us or post something or reply to uh, this and we will have a think about it and I will um, let you know okay so have a great day a uh, great evening wherever you may be Terry get well hope to see you soon thank you Judy thank you for everybody else who's tuned in uh, we will see you next time on Tuesday take care bonjour from Paris bye